Hi there! For those of you that don't know me, my name is Afsha and I'm a creative 3D technical fashion designer. There are sometimes many workflows to achieving a desired result using vStitcher. So as a friendly reminder, these videos are created for you to see some of my personal workflows and maybe you can pick up a tip or two to incorporate into your own. Anyways, I have a really interesting tutorial for you today. Last night I had a client reach out to me because they like to showcase their product in 3D on their website and they were having trouble with getting a realistic render for a bucket hat. They want the textures to show a little bit more, the seams to pop a bit more. So if you struggle with getting a good V-Ray render using vStitcher, this is going to apply to any garment or accessory that you create in the software. So let's get started. This is the bucket hat that we're going to be working with today and the print that I've applied to it was designed by textile designer Christy Asaro. If you're interested in seeing more of her work, I will put a link to her Instagram in the description. Right now what I'm noticing is that the fabric texture is looking a bit flat, so when you group an artwork with a fabric, you want to make sure you check off use lower layer maps so that fabric texture can pop through. What I also want to do is I want to double the physics of the fabric. It's looking a little bit flimsy to me and I want to give it more firmness. When you hit the dress button you can see that it firms up a little bit more. Another thing I noticed is the back has a shadow applied and that's because the stitch construction is set to open and the front is flat which is why it's still looking so flat. So I want to set both to directional seam actually. Open seam would be more for a seam that's pressed open and directional is for a seam that's pressed to one side. And I'm probably going to do that to all of the pattern pieces. So I'm going to you can individually select each edge and change the stitch construction to directional. But if you're having trouble shift selecting multiple ones at the same time, what you can do is select the entire pattern piece and go to line and change it to directional seam. And that will change all of the edges at once. And 0 0.04 depth might be too much, uh, where well you can decide after you see what the render looks like if you want to update it to 0 0.02. Now what the client has done is applied one stitch to the edge of the of the pattern piece and I want to actually, we already have the internal line so I want to apply each stitch individually. And we'll do the same on the lining layer as well so you can see the stitches on the other side. And now I can go back and double the physics of the lining layer as well. So that might be enough um, firmness and thickness for you, but you can keep on going and adjusting the thickness of the material. And if you want to go the extra step of adding a little bit of puffy, that will give it a nice firmness as well. And give it a little more thickness as well. It depends on the material that you are creating the bucket hat in, so maybe just doubling the physics is enough for you. But I'm really liking how this is looking so far, so I'm gonna keep the puffy. And I'm just gonna style it better because it's a little bit crooked on her head right now. I'm going to save a snapshot since we've come this far along and I don't want any crashes. So I was referring to an image that I found on Nike's website of this bucket hat. I like the way that the light is hitting it and also how the stitching is looking. So my stitches look a little bit too wide so I'm going to update that as well. I do also want to add some 3D thickness to it. To 
we're gonna go in and update that stitches per inch. So I'm gonna test out what number looks best for me. So seven I think looks the best, we're gonna stick with that. And I think I'm gonna lower the amount of space in between each, st each stitch as well. And we'll do the same thing to the rest of the stitches to match. So those look good. So what I'm going to do next is change the lighting. You have pretty good options for lighting, studio lighting in V-Stitch already, but if you're looking for something a little more specific, you can go to a website like polyhaven.com and you have plenty of options for free HDRIs that you can download. So when I'm referring to that Nike image, it has a little bit of a warmth to the lighting. So I'm what I do usually is I search studio lighting and now I can download one of those HDRIs and import it into V-Stitcher. It takes a couple of seconds to load, so just give it some time. This lighting looks, you know, very beautiful, but it's not exactly what we're looking for because it's too warm and maybe a little bit too dim. You can always play with the rotation of it and the exposure, but I think we need something a little bit different. So I'm going to go back to the polyhaven.com and what I usually refer to is those white spheres. Those will let me know what, you know, the color of the lighting and the angle of what it's set at. So let's try out this new one that we've downloaded. This one looks really nice. I think I'm gonna go with this one. It's it's lighting up the bucket hat at all angles really nicely. So we're gonna render this out and see how it looks. I usually set my V-Ray render to best and the image size to 8x8. So once it's rendered out, this is what it looks like. And this, the fabric itself and the lighting look really good, but the stitching does not look that great. It's, it has a little bit too much 3D thickness. And this is a vector seam, so uh, what you can also do instead is bring in a scene created in Photoshop, which has difference, you know, it has some shadows and highlights in it compared to a vector seam which is flat. So I'm going to replace that with the Photoshop seam so you can see what the difference look like, looks like. And already in your 3D window you can see that it makes a huge difference for us for this specific style. The 3D thickness was too much too, so we're going to really lower that for this new Photoshop seam. The depth of the directional seam was a little bit too much, so I'm just lowering that as well before we render the next image. So now let's do this render and we'll be able to compare them later. I won't show you what this one looks like yet because we have one more render that I want to do and then we can compare the three renders together in the end. So now I'm gonna select all those internal lines that were created for the stitches, and I'm gonna set them to all to have a directional seam with a depth of zero. 
and I'm going to add some puckering with the depth of zero as well with the width of 0.3. It, the, the width depends on the spacing that you have between each stitch. So you can see in the 3D window that it gives you that puckering effect that you get when you do top stitching. I'm also updating those directional seams on the top of the bucket hat as well and giving them a little bit of a pucker too. So we're going to render that out and you can see now the difference between the three. One with the vector seam, Photoshop seam, and then the end result with the Photoshop seam plus the pucker effect. So the middle image is looking pretty good. The first one is not that great, but the last one is probably the best render out of all the three of them. It looks the most realistic. So as you can see, it's not really going to be one answer that fits for everybody. It depends on how you want to present the product on your website. The lighting will be different, the seams will be different, the textures will be different. What I suggest you do is if you have a photo of the garment that was taken in the studio, work with it side by side as you set up the 3D garment file. Do 20, 30 renders, as many as it takes to get it perfect. What you want is for the customer to come across your product on your website and not be able to tell the difference between the 3D render and the real thing. If you've gotten to this point in this video, I really thank you for taking the time to watch this and I'm definitely looking forward to being able to make more of these for you.